Dr. Galvin. With today's wellness topic, we are actually going to be starting a series about hormones, and hormones play a really big role in all aspects of health, and we're going to start with actually a little bit of an unlikely candidate. We're actually going to start with vitamin D. Now, why would I talk about vitamin D in a hormone series? Well, because vitamin D is actually a pro-hormone. It's a precursor to hormones, and it has a lot of very hormonal-like effects. And Vitamin D is essential for several reasons. It's really important to promote the health of healthy bones and teeth. It supports the immune function. It, it supports brain function, uh, neurologic health. It has an effect on cardiovascular health. It regulates insulin levels, and if you happen to be diabetic, it can be very important for regulating diabetes. It supports our lung function. It also um, influences the genes involved in expressions of different types of cancer. And also we think that it may have a role to do, I mentioned immune function, but also in fighting off viruses. And there's been some evidence that, uh, that adequate levels of vitamin D can actually prevent the flu. And now there's some new papers out, including a, a, something I posted on our Facebook page just today that indicate that adequate levels of vitamin D may well reduce your risk of developing COVID or developing the severe forms of COVID. So it's important. Now, what are the the symptoms of low vitamin D, and you got to realize that a large percentage of Americans have low vitamin D, and that's in part because we don't get outside much anymore, and even though it's supplemented in some of our foods, we tend to not get enough, and what may be normal may not be optimal as well, and so it's important to get those levels checked and measured every year. Vitamin D levels tend to fall in the wintertime and then rise back up in the summertime because we can actually produce vitamin D in the skin when it gets hit by the sun. Now, what are some signs of vitamin D deficiency? Well, one of those are sort of frequent infections, viruses and, and illnesses. Fatigue is another one. Bone pain, back pain, muscle pain may be a, a symptom of low vitamin D. Depression, anxiety as well as diminished wound healing. So if your wounds heal slower than they used to, that could be a sign. Hair loss can be a, a symptom of vitamin D deficiency as well. Long term, you can develop some more serious complications, cardiovascular disease, certain types of cancers, in particular um, colon, breast, and prostate cancer have been related to low vitamin D. Neurologic problems, a variety of infections, and also it can cause pregnancy complications. So in women who have inadequate levels of vitamin D, it can cause problems with their preg uh, pregnancies and being able to develop and deliver healthy children. Now, what are the sources of vitamin D? Well, the sun, we talked about. The sun hits your skin, hits the melanocytes in your skin, and vitamin D is produced, and that's a really easy way to get vitamin D. And then fatty fish, things like salmon, mackerel, tuna are great sources. Um, egg yolks, cheese, and then we have foods like fortified milk that have vitamin D added into it that can be helpful, and you've probably seen even orange juice, some of that's got vitamin D in it. So those are all ways of, of getting vitamin D. And then we can supplement vitamin D too. And you know, people ask me, well, what's, what's, how much should I supplement for? Well, you know, we typically put our patients somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 units daily. It is technically possible to get vitamin D toxic, although it's extremely hard to do. And, and you know, I've never actually seen a case. Every once in a while, a case report gets, you know, presented where someone's taken 50,000 units daily for three or four months and they develop vitamin D toxicity, but it's actually very, very rare. Um, the other thing is getting sunlight. You know, get out in the sun 10, 15 minutes a day, you know, three, four days a week, you know, is enough to stimulate that vitamin D production, especially during the summertime. Now, interestingly, vitamin D production is actually somewhat related to the angle of the sun. And so we don't tend to produce vitamin D from sunlight between about October and April at, at these latitudes. And so that's why vitamin D levels tend to fall in the winter time. And you know, when does the flu season hit? In the winter time, and there's some thought that maybe those viral, those winter viruses, and you know, now we might be able to lump coronavirus into that, maybe you know, peak in the winter time because in part our vitamin D levels are at its lowest then. So it's really important to make sure your vitamin D levels are good going into this to winter, but in particular this winter because of the virus. How do you get that done? You know, you need to get your vitamin D level checked. Optimal levels, I think, are between about 70 and 90. The, the, the stated normal is 30 or above. I don't think 30 is adequate. That's vitamin D. We are going to be talking about a variety of hormones over the coming weeks. 
thyroid, testosterone, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA. We'll even talk about growth hormone and some other things over the course of the next you know, a few weeks. Anyway, that's the wellness topic for today. Keep tuning in. We are still doing COVID updates uh, very frequently, and more content is forthcoming. If you like this, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Hit the little bell so you get informed when we release new stuff. Have a great day. It's Dr. Galvin. We'll talk to you soon.